Sure. So my name is Ron Udiz. I'm a cardiologist at Harbor UCLA Medical Center, which is one of four uh, county hospitals in Los Angeles. That's a safety net hospital. And we run a pH program, mainly taking care of patients with pulmonary arterial hypertension, which is a diagnosis that usually affects young women uh, or maybe women that are a little bit older, but that have uh, autoimmune disease like scleroderma. The problem in PAH is really that the blood vessels of the lungs are too narrow and the heart has to overcome that resistance to blood flow by pumping a higher pressure to force the blood through. So unfortunately, PAH presents usually with fatigue and shortness of breath, a very common uh, presentation for patients that uh, most commonly doesn't uh, yield a diagnosis of something very severe and very progressive and incurable. And it is not only um, an abnormality that results in high pressure, but it's debilitating and it's progressive and it, it leads to early death if you don't treat it. Uh, although there's a predilection for certain types of individuals to get PAH, it's pretty rare. Um, in its idiopathic form, its purest form, where there's no underlying known associated conditions, for example, scleroderma or liver disease or HIV, then uh, it's one or two per million per year worldwide. So just like you would for a rare disease that your child or loved one have, might have been diagnosed where most people in the community don't really know, know what it is, you seek out a center where they've had uh, experts and they've had experience with this rare disease uh, in order to get the best first diagnostic capabilities and then uh, treatment offerings. And so the care team doesn't just involve a physician and a nurse, it involves a center. And that center has to have the ability to make the diagnosis and to rule out all those other causes of pulmonary hypertension, meaning the radiology department needs to be good, the cath lab needs to be good, nuclear medicine needs to be good, uh, and, they, and they need to be familiar. They need to see these patients frequently. You have to have a good echo lab because the echocardiogram, the ultrasound of the heart is, is critical in helping exclude other kinds of uh, contributors to pulmonary hypertension, as well as uh, describing the severity of the, the impairment in, in the heart function, as well as the, the, the associated uh, increase in pressure. The, the comprehensive care team uh, not only includes the, the primary caregivers, but also those ancillary support staff. In, in addition to the teams of care providers that we've talked about that are critical to the, to the center the expert center treating PAH, uh, we also have to have pharmacists on board. We have to have coordinators who are not necessarily coordinating research, but coordinating the care of the patient. And at different centers, it's a different uh, person or group of people that do that. Uh, but we try our best to uh, make sure that we have a core team that is aware of the challenges of, of adherence to medical therapy, to coming in for their routine checkups, et cetera. And it's centers like ours and others that have high volume PAH patients that are contributing to the drug development uh, efforts that are being led worldwide in order to offer patients something potentially better. In most centers, they're involved in research. And because this is such a, an elusive diagnosis and it's so progressive and even with treatment, uh, it still can progress and, and lead to early mortality, uh, finding newer and better treatments and better combinations of treatments is, is imperative. Um, and many times in these drugs that we've now got approved for PAH, these patients got in on the ground floor as uh, research subjects and they didn't have much time. They were lucky that the drug worked and that eventually got approved and that they got it sooner than they would have had they waited. We hope that the physicians who are out there that may never have seen a case of PAH, at least stop and think, you know, could this be PAH? Now, there's so many things that we have to think about as physicians, and we can't possibly work everyone up for every possible diagnosis, especially when the, size, the symptoms are so nonspecific. But again, we try to get the message out that uh, particularly in young women with unexplained shortness of breath, uh, the uh, antennae should pop up with the idea that maybe this is pulmonary arterial hypertension.